It's hard to pick a car more recognizable than the Corvette Stingray. Whether it be in red, blue, maybe white, or all three, a vehicle unmistakably American, but not out of place amongst its peers. This is the Corvette C2, the original Stingray, and the second car in Chevrolet's Corvette line. The peak of auto manufacturing in the United States at its debut in 1963, it helped cement the Corvette as an icon of the American auto industry. Seen here in its 1967 configuration and in full racing spec, the Corvette C2 had many enhancements and firsts of the brand's leading sports car. Independent rear suspension, a pioneering fuel injection system, aerodynamic wedge profile, all paired with the L79 small block, outputting over 390 horsepower, nearly 100 more than its contemporaries, Ferrari's legendary 250 GTO and Shelby's 286 Cobra. The Corvette was a quicker car in a straight line, and it could hold its own around the bends, too. There have been many models of Corvette over the years, but many agree the C2 is the finest of them all. The perfect pairing of muscle and simplicity, function and elegance. In its racing, the C2 was never far from the front, winning Sebring in class 1964, 66, and 67, its success was somewhat overshadowed and obscured by the miracle of Ford and its prototype. But within the GT ranks it was known, Chevrolet had arrived. The C2 was a true representation of showroom to track, a car obtainable by the fortunate everyman, quickly littering the myriad of curved racing arenas around the country enabling amateur racers and professionals alike. The C2 has been released for Assetto Corsa alongside 14 other remarkable examples of 1960s GT racing as a part of what's called the GTC 60s Pack by Baza and the AC Legends team. This set of cars sits nicely alongside their previously released 60s Touring and 70s GT packs as another excellent set of refined and balanced cars to populate your favorite virtual vintage event. Many of these cars have been available for years in various forms, and some are conversions from other sources, but each has been lovingly brought up to a standard which makes them worthwhile both in looks and handling characteristics. Each of these cars really deserves a story of its own, but the Corvette caught my eye most initially for its high-bodied stance and roaring V8. It's always a sight amongst the typically diminutive opponent cars. Every year at Goodwood, the C2 is a favorite of many. So, to put this legend through its paces, we're here at one of the West's best, a circuit only possible in the desolate expanse of the southwestern US, in an idealistic vista for high-powered automobiles. Big Willow at Willow Springs, brought to life by user Tyrone over at Race Department. A circuit unchanged since its creation in 1953, and a circuit where it's sometimes impossible to find an apex. Willow Springs was chosen for the opening of Ford vs Ferrari for a good reason, and once you do nail a lap, I'd find it hard to pick a better place to slide a vintage GT car. So lined up at the back of an eclectic grid of 2060s GT cars for a short 8 lap race to try and see how special the C2 Corvette really was. Alright, in the desert, back of the grid, beautiful GT cars in front, lights are lit. Out, we're underway. Try to get a little wheel spin off the line. Ooh, Lotus bogging down. Everybody checking up a couple times. It's E-Type in front. So we'll weave our way, try to get down towards the first corner. There we go. Second gear, keep it in second gear for this first turn. Hanging around the outside. Spitzerini in front, all over the track. Now work it towards Rabbit Ear. Inside line, unfamiliar territory for the Corvette. Almost touching the side of the Bitsarini there. I think I got away with it. We'll come towards the exit of the corner. 
passing a couple other cars, got the power down. Oh, 250 spinning out in front, just avoiding him. All right, there we go. Avoiding the chaos of the first lap, passing a whole bunch of cars, work up now towards balcony corner. Got a Porsche much quicker through this section, just a lighter car, lower to the ground. Less power though, so we'll come into the downhill. Just guide the car through here and want to get a good exit over this rise as the track will finally get to the high speed section, but such a tricky section ahead. Third gear now, we'll get up to fourth gear. Should be able to motor right past the Porsche. On the inside, gonna compromise the line a little bit. It's a fast fourth gear corner. Just lift off the throttle on the entry. Then on the exit, there we go. Come up to the final turn, the sweeper. Down to third gear and just guess where the apex is gonna be because it's always further than you think it would be. Ooh, little contact there with the Porsche on the outside. Should have a better exit. Onto the front straightaway, come to complete the first lap. A 286 Cobra there to the right. See if I can pass him coming down to turn one. Already up to P10 after the carnage on the first lap. Third gear, Cobra hangs it on the outside, it'll be better in the corners. Also got a lot of straight line speed, a great car oh, in itself. Lock it up a little bit into rabbit ear, I thought it was going off. A lot of runoff area at Big Willow, which is useful, there goes the Porsche. Useful for racing older cars, but absolutely can get you mired in the sand. little nudge out of the way as we'll head up to balcony again slide around the outside held on to it quite well there you can make contact in a sim because the cars in real life you wouldn't want to beat them as much as this although they do at Goodwood try to hang it on the inside always amazed by how hard they race these cars at Goodwood but you get away with a bit more in sim all right, in the slipstream now. A little bit of brakes on the entry there, just for confidence. Ooh, dip it on the sand. Sand can pull you off the track if you're not too careful. Down to third gear, slide it into the last corner. There we go, control the oversteer coming off, correct it. Pass the Cobra. Now that Cobra has less horsepower than the one that comes with a set of Corsa, but in my opinion, a little bit better to drive the 286 than the 427. Six laps to go. See a couple cars stretching away out front. Let's see if I can get past this pack though without too much more contact. Slide it into Rabbit Ear. Have to get comfortable with the sliding in these cars, especially the Corvette. There's just no other way to drive it fast. Put up the inside, the E-Type. Down a second gear. 911 in front locking up a bit. See if I can hang it around the outside into balcony. Oh, right against the white line. it up the inside is much more nimble car right against the curb didn't want to touch the sand there kill my exit speed but all right got away with that one want to get on the throttle to help turn the car so you definitely want to brake very early and then get on your throttle before the apex a lot like Older Grand Prix cars, really. Such a heavy car. But a lot of power. There we go. Nice line through the final corner. Should have me exit well to fourth gear. I'll come to the line. Motor on past the E-Type down to the first corner. Have to brake a lot earlier than he does, though.
on the outside. You do kind of want the outside line here. Just don't go too wide into the dirt. Cut it closer on the exit if you can, if you don't have an E-type on your inside. Second gear in a balcony. Oh, the 911 lets me have it. This is one of the later GTOs in front of me now. Right to the outside. Oh, the 911 hung it in there. balance the car, see if I can get my foot down a little sooner. It's going to have a better line, but certainly I'll have more straight line speed. There's nobody to my right, up to fourth gear. All right, just trying to plant some sort of line. 250 is a little slow. Get it down to third gear. Got in front of the 911. Straighten out the corner. 250 takes too early of an apex, shoots him out wide. Use that power to get right on past. All right, cross the line. Four laps to go, about halfway now. Ooh, 250's gonna come back on me. It's pretty late on the brakes. It's able to hold it though. Love the rear end of that car. The cars from every angle, all of these cars look amazing. Corvette in front's Roger Penske's Corvette. He did enter a Corvette at Sebring in Daytona at least for a few years in the 60s. Ooh, try not to hit my compatriot there over the top of the hill. Locking up the brakes as the road falls away. It's like they just put pavement over the natural terrain said that's the race course and that's why I think this track is so awesome up to fourth gear it's such a tricky track this is not an easy track these final corners especially are very difficult to figure out the right line especially in a car like this where you're sliding so much down a third gear on a wide entry here he's gonna compromise me a bit and get on the throttle sooner to have too much of a tank slapper coming out of the corner. Just power slide out of it. All right, just gonna fade out wide, see if I can throw it up the inside. Ooh, slide right in front of him, slide job a little bit gonna come back under me then hear the engine rattling away on the inside Let's squeeze him there so he can't quite get on the power down a second gear trying to run quite late could cross me over but I think I've got the position now Let's come up I think we got a little Austin Healy in front clearing the Corvette there, so we'll see what position I'm in. Passing most of the cars, but great fun to throw these cars on most of the circuits. They behave quite well and give you a great race, varied different cars to work your way through. Always something cool to look at. This mod comes with probably over a hundred different paint schemes in total too. There's already a bunch also popping up online, so you can really, you could have very large fields each with unique cars if you wanted. Right, two to go, P5. You can see a podium in front. Should have a lot more power in a straight line than this car. Just need to keep it on the black stuff. 
you know, luckily with so much desert next to the track, it's a great place for a motor circuit because in most circumstances, you're just going to go into the sand and not hit anything too hard, but very easy to get trapped out there. I get it down to second gear as we'll head up the hill Whoa, alongside, almost spinning out. over this crest should have enough power then on the straightaway to get past in the slipstream it's gonna block the center of the track pretty good position of the car so if I can come up the inside then it's gonna make it a lot tighter kind of would want the outside line here but he checks up a little bit on the exit get it down to third slide in behind him we're gonna understeer a little bit he might apex too early though should have a better exit Nice run down the front straightaway. We'll come to start the last lap. Cross the line. Down to third gear, trying not to overdo it. Gonna stay a little more tidy. Oh, we're gonna slide a bit, but he's stuck in behind me. All right, there we go. Up into fourth, got third right in front. Another Cobra, hard top Cobra, I think. too early there on the power walking the car too much you want to have one continuous slide if you can down a second gear rear end a little too light coming in oh getting crossed up again very easy to get the car out of shape there over the bumps around the top of the hill this cobra should be pretty fast in a straight line in front we'll see if i can get close enough to him to think about it. All right, back on the power full. Work it to the outside. Down a third gear. No, oh, I'm gonna run too wide. There we go, overcooking it, looking in the mirror for the Austin Healy. So not going to get him. Overdid it in the last corner, but not a bad race overall from 20th to 4th. A little bit of contact along the way, but a ton of fun. A bit of a disappointing final corner, but coming away with fourth from 20th on the grid is not too bad. Two Alpha 33s way out front and had that Cobra hard top in front of me, but a great race. Sliding this Corvette around Willow Springs is a ton of fun as it is with many other tracks, but highly recommend it. All of these cars from the 60s GT set from AC Legends are worth your time. They've done a great job improving them and they all have a unique feeling. Uh, this Corvette here, heavy, but very powerful. Something like the Cobra, very powerful and light. You've got the Porsche, not as powerful, but low to the ground and super nimble. You have a great time racing all of them. And, and this is probably just the first of many that I'll take a look at. So like I said in the intro, the C2 Corvette for me is my favorite of the line. It straddles that road car and race car extremely well. It's got a bit of a European influence in it with the style and layout of the car, but then with the big engine and the combination is a pleasure to drive. So I hope you enjoyed this. The GTC pack, as all the AC Legends packs are, is hours of fun. I'll be back with more soon. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all again next time.